Yang Berhormat Dr. Wira Dr. Hatta Ramli Deputy Minister for Entrepreneur Development Yang Berbahagia Tan Sri Lee Kim Yew Advisor to the Kinsey Strategic Institute Mr. Michael Walsh Chief Executive Pacific Basin Economic Council Excellencies Dr. Dato Ladies and Gentlemen Selamat pagi dan selamat datang And please extend a very warm welcome to all of you to the Asia Economic and Entrepreneurship Summit organized jointly by KSI and PVAC Hong Kong. We believe that the future of Asia is on the one hand interesting and bright, but on the other hand worrying and challenging. Economically, we see the economies of Asian countries progressing well with robust economic growth and sustainable development. HSBC Bank has predicted that three of the five biggest economies in the world will be from Asia, which we know already, China, India, Japan, but there are several other countries predicted to join the top 20 in the world, Indonesia, Korea, Pakistan, and Thailand. So we see Asia emerging to play a bigger role in the global economy. But at the same time, we are worried and wary about the trade and technology war that may dampen growth for our region and perhaps also for the global economy. We hope that this issue can be satisfactorily resolved soon for the better of the world economy. We hope to hear a bit more of this from His Excellency and Ambassador Sukha, one of China's most senior diplomats who has traveled from Beijing to be with us here today. Ambassador Su was former president of the China Institute for International Studies, one of the top international relations think tanks in China, and is now the international chair of the Pacific Economic Cooperation Council. So welcome, Ambassador Su, to join us again. We believe that Asia is also facing digital disruption and technological transformation on a scale perhaps not seen before in the region. With the game-changing impact of artificial intelligence, robotics, virtual reality, big data, and the internet of things. While some parts of Asia are grappling with the fourth industrial revolution. There are other regions in Asia which have not yet even seen the second industrial revolution. And that's a big gap that we see facing us in Asia. And that's why we need to further emphasize and prioritize sustainable and inclusive development. It is our view that the four eyes will remain important priorities for Asian governments to resolve. Income inequalities, investment, innovation, and infrastructure development. And we hope that governments and business, and perhaps also the contribution of civil society, can work together to help Asia achieve and address the four eyes. At the same time, we also see a need for countries in the region to focus on and prioritize the UN's 17 Sustainable Development Goals. And we see a growing role for tripartite partnership between government, business, and civil society to achieve the SDGs. Here in Malaysia, we have established a CSO-SDG alliance comprising of 55 
civil society organizations to partner with government and business to help develop and ensure we achieve the 17 SDGs. Connectivity is another important challenge that we need to address, both in terms of transport connectivity and communication connectivity. And we hope that we will be able to also forge strong public-private partnerships to ensure that the connectivity master plan for ASEAN can be achieved. Today, we have brought together several leading experts as well as some senior ambassadors in the country to share with us their thoughts, their insights on the future of Asia. I would like to thank our many distinguished speakers for taking time off your very busy schedule to join us and to share your insights with us. Thank you also to the many corporate partners and sponsors for your help in making this event successful. And once again, I'd like to thank the Honorable Deputy Minister, Yang Muhammad Akubira Mamahata Ramli, for being present with us here this morning. Sekian, terima kasih. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, ambassadors, and of course, I'd like to thank our partner, um, Tantri Michael Yao, for having me here today, and all the uh, distinguished guests. I'm very honored. It is my first public appearance as the PBET Chief Executive, having taken over just uh, over a month ago. So I'm very honored to be here with you today and share my insights from being 12 years in Asia Pacific. PBEC is called the Pacific Basin Economic Council and it is my great honor to join you all today here in Kuala Lumpur, the capital and the heart of ASEAN. As a joint organizer with the Kingsley Strategic Institute and Asia Society, our supporting organization. PBEC has been in, in, in existence since 1967 and was founded by Weldon Hoot Gibson, OBE, from a guy from Texas who himself was an economist. We advocate for closer cooperation between the 21 economies under APEC, and I'm personally excited to get to network, listen, and engage with my fellow delegates. Looking at the program, it's going to be a very informative day in store ahead. Taking time to listen and question are key skills that form consensus opinions and ultimately are the backbone from which new policies are created that enjoy the most longevity and have meaningful positive impact to society. The current news, obviously, as Michael has touched upon, has focused unwanted attention on the US trade, US China trade tariffs and ongoing negotiations. I'm sure in the short term, this is a factor we all need to grapple with as leaders in our future forecasting and budgets. But it is equally important to take a longer term viewpoint and assess where we are in the age of rapid disruption. For your information, APEC's post-2020 agenda includes the rising protectionism, economic rebalancing and diversified growth. The digital era we now live in can be part of the future solutions we need to address globally and regionally, but it can also continue to create problems in all of the above agenda items. The growing impact of AI, robotics, and Internet of Things, for instance, which will be discussed in more details today, we also need to take heed of the growing potential negative side effects of the digital world and having Internet access in everybody's home and workplace particularly personal and corporate reputational risk, health issues such as depression and addiction, being perhaps too open with our data via social media, game sharing platforms that can allow cyber bullying and trolling to occur, as well as threats to intellectual, intellectual property rights, copycat of products and so on, that can harm economic growth as well as taxing, uh, as well as being able to tax its source. 
There is an argument all unsensitive data should be shared for the betterment of connecting society and levelling the playing field for entrepreneurs and smaller economies to flourish further. But who gets to judge what is sensitive data and what is not? Governments are certainly concerned about cross-border flows of data already, and this I am sure will be discussed further during today's sessions. PBEC encourages deeper and meaningful business connections amongst its peer community of business leaders, creating new business opportunities and communicating with governments across the 21 economies of APEC. We advocate and accredit companies who take responsible and sustainable actions and processes seriously within their businesses, in particular when it comes to positive impacts on community, environment, social and employee welfare issues. Being here in Malaysia, we must also mention the future of clean energy supply and distribution. Traditionally blessed with natural resources, the conversation on what is required going forward will be a sustainable one. And it will be interesting to hear how quickly Malaysia is adapting to the increasing demands of the new millennials on reduced environmental impact. This will be interesting to watch play out while balancing sustaining economic growth and job creation. In summary, the four E's will have a big impact on Asia's future growth. Economy, environment, employment and energy. So let's get this summit underway. I'm delighted to welcome up on stage our next speaker. Thank you so much for having me, and I look forward to today in engaging with you all. Thank you. Good morning, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Thank God for the opportunity to be with distinguished guests. Thanks for the Vice Principal Strategic Institute, Councilor Michael Gill, President, Mr. Michael Walsh, from the Basket Business Economic Council, Your Excellency's Ambassadors, and guests, especially from overseas, ladies and gentlemen. Firstly, I would like to extend uh, salam wishes from our Minister, who is supposed to be here, but is away in the UK at the moment. And I'm sure he's going to miss this uh, meeting, but I'll get him informed of what, has, uh, what event uh, is uh, coming up from this uh, meeting. And um, I'm glad to be here. I'm not uh, familiar with the uh, surrounding, although I'm familiar with Bansley. Yeah? So hopefully uh, we'll gain something from this uh, meeting, and uh, I would like to congratulate uh, Kingsley Strategic Institute for being very hardworking in organizing uh, various uh, uh, meetings and summits. Uh, they had just uh, organized something like uh, 2019 Chinese Business Economic uh, Summit recently. Yeah. All of our new Sabbath yeah, and also other meetings and uh, meetings of strategic mind to help Malaysia to position itself uh, in the economic world. The Asia Economic and Entrepreneurship Summit uh, convened here today for the world is apt and timely. I warmly welcome here our overseas delegates and speakers. The world faces several geopolitical and geoeconomic challenges and threats. We have heard that from our two uh, organizers. But I guess uh, all the problems are created by men, by ourselves, so there should be a solution. Uh, we should be brave enough to take the world by the heart in order to, you know, to create a society, a country, a region that is safe and uh, prosperous where we can share the prosperity that we created. We see today young entrepreneurs emerging in the new digital economy. Asians are today in the global forefront of this digital revolution, transforming the economy into the fast-changing world of digital disruption. Yeah. AI, artificial intelligence, robotics, and the Internet of Things. 
These new technologies are creating thousands of new entrepreneurs and spurring a new sense of entrepreneurship across our continent, Asia. That's why I presume the uh, wise uh, prime minister <coughs> recreated this Ministry of Entrepreneur Development after a nine-year hiatus, and uh, we are now in the midst of developing the national policy for entrepreneurship, which will be launched by the prime minister in uh, three weeks' time on the 11th of July. This is a bottom-up process uh, to develop a policy that will benefit the people and position Malaysia as a, a country where entrepreneurship is appreciated and our children will be developed in the education system to become entrepreneurs rather than thinking of being down servant or employed by others. They should be the employers and creating employment. So this is the idea that the ministry is trying to promote. And we are <coughs> trying to position entrepreneurship as a big contributor to the GDP by the year 2030. Currently, we are, the entrepreneurs, the SMEs are contributing about 37% of GDP, and hopefully by 2030, we will be significantly placed by contributing about 50% of the GDP of the country. I think that is possible. We can work together with every uh, interested party uh, in the country. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that the future of Asia depends on severe several key uh, success factors also mentioned by our previous speakers. Firstly, is the need to develop our human capital. We need to look uh, forward on our education system to prepare the future of the work that will be based on digital farming and the fourth industrial revolution, where new skills in robotics, AI, IoT will be necessary. Lifelong learning is also essential while not letting off the importance of soft skills and development of our personalities through our education system, I think we should also encourage our future generation to be involved in the new change in the economy. Secondly, there is a need to maintain regional peace and stability. Asian prosperity needs a peaceful and stable environment for business to grow and thrive. Government must work together to generate confidence so that conflicts and problems can be resolved. A conflict management mechanism must be put in place to manage and overcome crises like the one we are facing at the moment. Thirdly, government must be pro-business and be entrepreneurial friendly. Entrepreneurs can contribute to economic growth and job creation and thereby assist in achieving shared prosperity, a concept that has been ordered by our wise Prime Minister. Promoting entrepreneurship will help generate wealth and economy. The focus should be young entrepreneurs as well as other groups like women entrepreneurs. These are some of the specific groups that are being targeted by the ministry in the development of our entrepreneurial policy. Fourthly, Asia needs sustainable and inclusive growth to ensure our environment is protected for future generations to enjoy, while inclusive growth will help address the challenge of uh, eradicating poverty and inequality, whether it is in the form of income gap or access to essential amenities like health and education. I think we are living in Malaysia doing very well, but we must keep uh, alert so that no, uh, you know, there is no outside or internal forces that may disrupt the current uh, improvement that we are already achieving. Fifthly, we need to ensure that with the rapid development in Malaysia, we don't lose our moral values. We must continue to be guided by our common Asian values of good morals, honesty, integrity, tolerance, and mutual respect. 
Sesuai dengan Malaysia It's a melting pot of several cultures and religions I think this is something very peculiar and very important And we should maintain that That is why the new government insists on shared prosperity That we live together This is basically a bond We work, we be dialed So we should appreciate what we are having now Rather than you know, fighting on individual racism or racial importance. The Ministry of Insurance Development is committed to the development and promotion of entrepreneurship, as I said before. We would like to assist entrepreneurs and provide assistance to nurture and encourage new and young entrepreneurs. Strong focus is also accorded to the development of small and medium enterprises in SME. We look forward to receiving your views, inputs, and suggestions on how we can help develop the SME sector. As I said, in three weeks' time, we're going to put forward to the public our policy. There's still three weeks for the meeting today to give input. You know, this policy is a working policy. It's not something that's in stone, so we can always improve to them. I believe there is room for inter-country collaboration on SME development. SMEs from the ASEAN countries can work together and learn from each other, as well as share experiences and thoughts. Perhaps SMEs in ASEAN can form joint ventures to collaborate on specific projects where economies of scale can benefit from such strategic partnerships. I know that in many of our countries, family business is referring to Family business are also main drivers of businesses. Family businesses have tried a lot for a long time in our country, some uh, into its third or fourth generation. Yet, we have also heard about some family businesses not succeeding beyond the first or second generation. Family businesses have contributed significantly to the growth and development of Malaysia, and I believe to many other countries in our region. Family businesses promote entrepreneurial skills, create jobs, pay taxes, and contribute to overall economic development. Succession, succession planning and the institutionalization of family offices will help protect and preserve family wealth so that the family wealth lasts longer and endures beyond the lifetime of the founder entrepreneur. Successful family businesses will have put in place professional management that will result in separation between ownership and management. My hope is that we can encourage and promote multi-racial family businesses, uh, business partnerships in our country so that it will enhance national unity and harmony. It would be wonderful to see Malay family business working together closely, intimately with uh, businesses from Chinese home or Indian home uh, in the form of joint ventures and so on. That can be a future growth strategy for our family businesses and also a form of you know, uh, how we can develop solidarity among the people of this country and how we can appreciate each other's presence, not in the form of compromises but through understanding of the differences that we have. Finally, let me share some thoughts on global trade and technology wars. We believe such trade or technology wars do not benefit anyone or any country. We'll all be losers. Though some may lose more, others may gain slightly, but in the long term, all of us will be losers. Protectionism will not benefit any country. Instead, we should look at win win outcomes. We must work at prospering our neighbors. I believe the future of Asia is exciting with projections that several of the 10 largest economies will be from this year, as mentioned by country here. And uh, it is uh, also expected that countries like China, Japan, India, Indonesia, and Pakistan, and also Korea, will be among the top 10, and this will be a uh, source of encouragement for the rest of Asia. It is also an exciting time for us, as Asia has a generally young population and the power and energy of youth will propel us forward. 
Asia has also embraced digital disruption ahead of many other countries. So let's build on our strength, be optimistic of our future, and reap the rewards of continuing to provide the In conclusion, I wish to thank the country, Michael Liu, the Team Sweet Strategy Institute, the Asian Society and the Pacific Economic Corporate Council, and also the Pacific Basic Economic Council for inviting me to this event and more so for organizing this event that will help Malaysia move forward. Thank you very much. I wish you a meaningful and successful policy.